Yes, we see it. Oh, good. Yay. All right. Fantastic. I have a story to share with you, and this story is called Cakes and Miracles, a Purim tale by Barbara Diamond Golden, and it goes like this. Herschel was the only blind boy in his village, but his blindness didn't keep him from going to school or shaking pears from the neighbor's tree or catching frogs in the river. The river was Herschel's favorite place in the village. Besides frogs and water, there was mud to play in. He could make the mud do anything he wanted it to do. A poke here and he had a cave, a push there and he had a tunnel. He tried to wash the mud off his clothes before he went home, but he always missed a patch or two. You have to go to the river and get all muddy, his mother Basha said when he came inside. Herschel sighed. He did not mean to make extra work for his mother. Ever since his father died, she was busy enough trying to feed and clothe the two of them. She sewed, she cleaned, she cooked, she baked, especially in early spring and forum time, she baked. Then the three-cornered fat cakes called hamantashen sold well in the marketplace. This year, maybe I can sell enough hamantashen to buy two more chickens, Basha said, hopefully. This year, maybe I can help you with the cakes, said Herschel. But you cannot see to make them, said Basha. Do not worry, Herschel. You will help me in other ways as you always do. And she patted his head lovingly. That night, the night before Purim, Herschel climbed into his bed. And after he said his bedtime prayer, he whispered, If only I could see and help my mother more. In the night, he had a dream. In his dream, Herschel saw the most beautiful winged angel descending a sparkling ladder. The angel bent down towards him. Make what you see, the angel said. But I haven't been able to see since I was sick, Herschel protested. You see when you close your eyes, you see in your dreams, the angel answered. It's true, I can see in my dreams, he whispered. Herschel awoke and the angel was gone, but he remembered what the angel had said. Soon he heard his mother shaking uh, the stove, uh, stocking the stove, that makes more sense. Mother. He called out, good news, I can see in my head, and if I can see, I can help you with your cakes. Herschel, Herschel, said Basha, shaking her head sadly, you wish you could see. I wish you could see, but how can a blind boy see? I can't let you play with the dough. I won't play, mother. I'll make cakes or, or maybe something different. Cookies, cookies in wonderful shapes. Shapes too, Herschel. Such a good imagination, my son has. After school, Herschel did his chores. He fetched, he carried, he cleaned pans while his mother mixed and rolled and cut and baked. At nightfall, Basha said, I'll leave this batch of dough to roll and cut in the morning, Purim morning. Then they went to synagogue to hear the chanting of the Megillah, the story of Queen Esther. Herschel did not forget his noisemaker. Every child had one. And when the rabbi chanted the name of the villain Haman, ooh, his voice was drowned out by the shaking and rattling of the noisemakers. What fun Herschel had. But that night, Herschel could not sleep. He went to the kitchen where his mother's hamantaschen lay. He felt for the bowl filled with dough and took a piece in his hands. The cool smoothness made him think of the mud by the river. Herschel needed the dough. He formed a bird and a fish and a goblet. As he worked, he found it easier and easier to shape the cookies so they matched the images dancing in his head. As the night turned to day, his mother awoke. What are you doing, Herschel, she demanded. I told you not to play with the dough. Then she saw Herschel's cookies. But, but they are beautiful, Herschel. How can a boy who cannot see, but I can see, Herschel interrupted. When I close my eyes, I see. Truly a miracle, Basha said. And she took Herschel's face tenderly in her hands. Do you think people will buy them, mother, Herschel worried. One, uh, do onions grow in the ground? Basha answered, but we won't sell even one in the kitchen. I'll bake your cookies and we'll carry them to market. The market was already a busy place. Herschel could smell the familiar odor of herring and pickles, bread and cheese. He could hear the chickens cackling and the vendors calling out. But today there were new sweet smells coming from the tables loaded with Purim treats. The honey cakes, the bottles of syrups, pears, wines, the hamantaschen shaped like Haman's three-corner hat. Herschel and Basha set out their baked goods. Buy a special cake for Purim, Basha called. Soon there was quite a crowd around Basha's table. Faye, the belt maker, wanted four cookies, and Liba, the feather picker, wanted three. Even Beryl, the, the baker, bought a cookie, the last one. 
He pinched Herschel's cheeks as he walked by. You'll be a talented baker one day, he said. Come talk to me. Herschel, his mother, turned to him. Did you hear what Barrow said? It's not every day a nice word like that comes from his mouth. And every hummingtosh, every cookie is gone. Herschel couldn't see the table, but he could feel the excitement all around him. Purim excitement, cookie excitement, talent excitement. And in his head, he could see himself as a man, a baker, perhaps, with bowls of flour all around, or a carpenter, or a shoemaker, or a toolmaker. How happy Herschel was. The end.